screen. So if you don't have a Bible, there, there you go. So, James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the twelve tribes who were dispersed abroad, greetings. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. One of my pet peeves when it comes to the letters, I'm just, just going to be honest, when, when we go into these small groups, when we go into these discipleship groups and these Bible studies and all these things, one of my, one of my pet peeves is we'll just, we'll just read through the letter and we skip the first two verses. Like we're like, oh yeah, James wrote it. That's cool. Hey, he was a bondservant. I get it. He, he's writing to these people. But we don't go into the implications of what this means. Like we don't go into... I, and I just want to look at that real quick, because it, the person who wrote this was James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. This says so much. This has so much here. But we skip it. We're definitely American. We just go fast, and we just read through stuff. <laughs> and we don't look at the details. We don't see what it implies. We're not asking the Holy Spirit, does this mean something more than what I'm reading, because I honestly don't understand it? Or it's just James, a bondservant of God. That's cool. That's awesome. Go, James. Being a bond servant, you're great. But when you read it, James, who was James? We believe that James was the half-brother of Jesus Christ. And when it, when it comes to this, I, I don't think we understand what this means. We, we, hear, we see James in Matt through the Gospels. We see him in Acts with Paul. And Paul actually asked James for advice. That's kind of a big deal, right, Paul? Whoa. And so there's that, yeah. But James is a half brother, the half brother of Jesus. So, if, if this is true, which it, 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 we believe it is, James was there during the time where we know nothing about Jesus' life. He, we, we only have when Jesus was born, when he was about 12 years old, and then when his ministry starts. So, here's James, the half brother of Jesus, saying, I'm a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when people are like, well, what, what happens with Jesus when, well, we don't know those times where like, Jesus was going through his life. He could have sinned then and all that stuff. Here's James who was there the whole time. He says, no, he, he was the real deal. Mm -hmm. Jesus was who he says he was. And I'm a bondservant. And that's Old Testament language. I don't know if you guys have looked into what it means to be a bondservant. But in Deuteronomy, after seven years, when they were slaves... They, they would say, they, they would come to this point where the masters would set them free, but they actually had a choice to stay with their masters. He was like, oh, you got, you're awesome, I'm staying with you, and I, I, I'm going to serve you for the rest of my life. And so this is Old Testament language, James, a bondservant. So he's making this commitment to Jesus. He's like, I, I'm, Jesus has my life. He, he's the real deal. And so when people skip this verse, we can go on like literally probably for an hour just on this one verse. And when we skip it, it drives me crazy. I literally, I'm sitting in a small group, and we're reading through a letter, and I'm just like, I raise my hand, and they all look at me, and they just think I'm crazy. And my church, they love me so much. <laughs> they love me so much. They're just like, you missed something. And they're like, what did we miss, Cam? And they're like, can we talk about who, who James or Paul is just a little bit? I mean, I understand that. We all know who these people are, but let's talk about it some more. Come on. And so that, that's just something so cool. James, a bondservant of God and Lord Jesus Christ. So there, there's a little bit of an intro for you guys. But that's just awesome, just thinking that what it was like to be James and to, to be raised with, like, with Jesus. And, and I'm saying that he's the son of God, you know. That's just crazy to me. I can't, I can't imagine. I couldn't say my brother's bored. My brother thinks he's a thug. I'm just saying, I, I couldn't do it. If you meet my brother, you'll love him. He's great. He literally will walk through, this is a little off, but he'll rock, walk through our house and he'll just go, thug. And he'll walk off and just like, oh, you're crazy. I love my brother. But, <laughs> anywho. Um, the first point is to, because we're going into Thanksgiving, and when, and when you go into 
spending time with family and friends. Um, there's something my family does where we'll go around the table and say one thing we're thankful for. And something I've noticed year after year is we always talk about thankful for the things that we have. And we're, we're thankful for Jesus, yes, but we don't, we don't really go into why we're thankful for Jesus sometimes in my family. And it broke my heart when I when I realized this last year. And, and But I never had ever, ever heard someone say, I'm thankful for the hard times I'm going through right now. Like, I've never heard that. I'm thankful because I'm going through this, and, and the, the gospel will proclaim, be proclaimed through my hardships. I, I've never heard that, ever. And, and you guys might have, but like with my family, uh -uh. <laughs> my family is lovely. I love them. I'm excited to see them next week. But... We're going to go in, into verse 2. It says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. Consider it. This is a continual thing. If you look into the Greek, it goes into this, this aorist tense thing. I'm not going to explain what that is. But it, it's, just, it's a continual process. Considering it. The, throughout the New Testament, it says, prepare your minds for action. And it goes, and then Romans 12 says, do not be conformed to the world. These are, these are processes of the mind. You have to think daily before, like, that's why we, we encourage you to do your five times in the morning. Think through your day. Stuff's happening. And it says, consider it all joy. We talked about songs about being glad. I'm going to go into that in a minute. My brethren, when you encounter various trials. It's not if you encounter various trials. It's when you encounter various trials. I like what Brother Scott said the other week about, I, I can't quote it straight up, but he says you're either in a trial, going into a trial, or what was the other one? Coming out. You're coming out of a trial. That's so true because the thing is, is if we are following Jesus and we are trying to make our lives be reflections of his life, Jesus went, I'll just be honest with you, he, he went through crap, like, he was persecuted. He, like, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were just bashing Jesus all the time, trying to, trying to kill him and stuff. And even his best friends, his disciples, they, they left him when he was going to the cross. And so it's just like, and then he died for us, which we don't deserve. So when, when it comes to considering it all joy, when, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, trials are coming your way. So, it, it's, life's hard. It is. And following Jesus is even harder. Uh, but it's worth it. It's so worth it. And, and when you have the option to consider, when someone asks you how you're doing, yeah, your circumstance may not be the best. Um, and and you, there is a time to grieve and there is a time to be upset and stuff. But the state that you're in, you are glad. And what I mean by that is when someone asks you how you are, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not doing so hot. Um, I'm, I'm okay. I'm good. But if you change that to where I'm glad, people are always going to ask, why? How are you doing? I'm glad. Why? I, the circumstances I'm going through aren't the best, but I, I've been saved by the blood of Jesus, and I'm glad. I, I, this is only a temporary thing, but I'm set for eternity, and I want to share that with you. And I hope that you see that through my life. I hope you see that I have joy that, that I can't explain except it's by the power of God. That I have this. So consider it a joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Well, I, one thing I want to hit on before we go into the, the testing of your faith. Trials, it says various trials, many things. Trials are a test. When you're going through a trial which you will be, or you are going through one right now. I don't know what that is. It could be financial issues. It could be you're being picked on at school. I, I, I don't know what's going on in your lives. I, I wish that I, I could, but there's a lot of people in here. And, you know. But you're going through something. And trials, if you look into it, it, it means test. And what's happening is, is God is pretty much saying, do you trust me? In this time, do, do you trust me? Do you really, do you really, like Peter says, prove, like, so that the proof of your faith be more precious than gold. That the proof of your faith. God is saying, do you really trust me? Do you really believe who I, you, I say who I am? Do you trust me? Because I got you. And, and, and Jesus always said that he's sending a helper. Like he, when he was going, he was sending a helper, the Holy Spirit. And, and something that, that drives me crazy is that 
um, in our English translation, the, the helper, the comforter. It, it, it does it some justice, but when you actually look into it, I liked what R.C. Sproul said. And he said the word is, like for helper and comforter is, I can never pronounce it right. But it's parakalitos. Yeah? So we'll make it, we'll make it through this. Um, and, and what happened is when you use that word, it talked like the Jewish people or like who like who the audience was. It, it was referring to the family attorney. And any time a problem arose, the Paracolitos was on call, and he would immediately come to assist in the struggle. And so when Jesus said, "The Holy Spirit is your helper; he's your comforter," that means he he's there. And he's waiting on you to call him, and he'll be there in heartbeat to help you. He's walking alongside you in your situations. That's awesome that God, the presence of God, is literally walking alongside you through all your trials. And, and he's saying, do you trust me? Do you genuinely trust me? Because I, I got it. I am who I am, you know. And so we, we have an option to consider it joy. Knowing that the, the God is walking alongside us through all of our stuff and that he's been through it, there's comfort in that. So that, that's something to, to think about, especially when you leave. You need to start preparing your mind. When you leave this building, stuff could happen. When I was 10 years old, I had no idea that my, de- my father would pass away. <laughs> like, I, I did not know stuff like that. Like, I, in my little world, I was just like, nuh-uh. You know, like, you guys are joking. I remember going into my house, and my brother was just like, hey, our dad passed away. I was like, you're a jokester. <laughs> I was just like, nah. Um, and then the, the reality hit, you know. That stuff happens. And my, my dad was saved, so. Yeah. Hashtag go Jesus. <laughs> you know, but it's just like, I have peace with that, and I find joy in that, and I, I'm able to share my dad's story with people. And so we're, we're moving on. Well, I, I want to, one thing that was, that hit me when it was talking about when you encounter various trials is that in 45 AD, Nero was not right, like in rule yet. And 15 to 20 years later, he would be. And if you know anything about Nero, he set Rome on fire and he blamed it on the Christians. And then Christians, like, honestly, they, they went through hell, like, on earth. Like, they were put in leather bags thrown in water where it shrink, would shrink and crush them. Um, Nero would put Christians in tar and light them on fire to light up his garden and stuff. And they were good. this was about to happen. So James was like, when you encounter various trials, stuff's coming. And this is what was, what was coming their way, you know. It's like, whoa, I don't know if I could deal with stuff like that, man. <laughs> That's pretty hectic, man. I was like, uh uh-huh. <laughs> But we're pretty blessed in America, you know. We, we can go share our faith. We might get some weird looks. Um, but we, we can share our faith openly and freely, which is awesome. We need to be taking advantage of that because we don't know what's coming in 20 years. Amen. We could be facing another time where it might be like Nero, you know, where we, we will be put to death for our faith. And if that's if so, what greater death, you know? Because Paul even said, for to you it has been granted not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. So if you're a believer, you're called to suffer. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. And that sounds awful, but Jesus said that you will be hated by the world if you follow me. You will. And, and, and so my question with that is, if you're genuinely following Jesus, if you're not facing any persecution, you might have to take a look at your life. Am I being bold and courageous? Am I taking steps out? Do I actually, because the Holy Spirit's a comforter. Well, how is he supposed to comfort, comfort you if you're already comfortable, you know? So it's just like, what up with that? So if you're, if you're living this uh, American life where you're sitting in your house and you're watching TV and that's all you do and you're not going out and being intentional with your faith, sharing the gospel, proclaiming the gospel, serving people, putting their needs before your needs, and you're, you just have this uh, apathetic attitude, you might need to check your heart. And when it comes to God's word and when it comes to seeking him with everything you've got, if that's boring to you, that scares me. That's a scary thing. God's word is not boring, by the way. He speaks. It's, it's literally him revealing himself to people like us. That's just awesome. But anyway, um, when, when I think of the perfect picture of this, considering it all joy, my brother, and I think of um, my youth pastor. Is it cool if I share with you guys a story? Yeah. You're all giving me the look. What do you got, big boy? I'm just like, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. But, um... 
when I was in high school, um, and this is literally the perfect example like I can think of in my life in my lifetime, which I know is only 21 years, but in my lifetime when, when I saw someone consider a joy through trials. And what happened is I, I was my junior year in high school, and I get a phone call and saying that you need to get to Baptist Health Hospital somewhere in Montgomery. I was like, why? Chad needs you. I was like, okay, Chad. So he's like my dad, so I'm just like, yeah. And so I, I get to the hospital, and um, I, find, I find out that his daughter, Jordan, who was at Troy University, um, was abducted, and she uh, it was after her job in Zaxby's, and this guy took her car, and he stabbed her 45 times, and um, he threw her, on the, um, threw her on the side of the road and just went off with her car, and they told her, Chad, that she wasn't going to make it. And... Um, I saw Chad, Chad was, I mean, I would be weeping too. I was weeping, and Chad was just like, and I was just like, I've never seen Chad like this in my life. Chad was one of the most, he is one of the most joyful people I've ever met. I got to see him yesterday at a wedding. I missed that guy. But um, when, I, when I saw his face, I was like, whoa, man. I, I, I can't even imagine. And, and the whole church, which is like six or 700 members, was in the hospital. And they were all outside waiting to come in. And, and we were just all there. I'm just like, you guys are awesome <laughs> but um chad comes out and he and he's just crying and he, he brings it together and, and i just remember him saying um and this it'll never i'll never forget it um uh, he's like guys uh jordan may not make it and i was like and i just lost it there i was just like oh my gosh <laughs> she's like my older sister you know and uh what happened was he's like i don't know who this guy is but honestly i want to punch him in the face I want to take him out. I was like, okay, where's he going with this? <laughs> and he was just like, I hope they find him. But if, when they, if and when they do, I just want to share Jesus with them. And I, I hope he comes to know Jesus. Uh, I mean, he did this to my baby girl, yeah, but I know where my girl's going. <laughs> this man would not be going to heaven if, if he died today. And I was just, I was like, I lost. I was like, what? Are you serious? Ain't no way I would have that. And he was just like, he was just smiling at the thought. He's like, if he gets behind bars, I'm going to share the gospel with him. And Chad's done that. I was like, my, if my baby girl got was like on on the verge of dying, I don't, I would not have that attitude, you know. And he's like, I was grieving, but you could see he had peace on his face. I'll never forget it. And he said, and he even, I think he quoted this verse to me after, like, she she ended up being good. Like, she, they, they had to do a whole bunch of surgeries, and she made it. Now she's married, and it's awesome. Um, it wasn't, so they, the doctors were like, whoa, what, what's going on, you know? And it was just like, Jesus. But we were just like, they, they were just like, Man. But it's just like, just seeing that, that joy and that, in Chad, I, I just pray that, like, Lord, put that, instill that within me, you know? Like, if I, I he, he, Chad prepares his mind, you know, for stuff like that. I'm just like, and he's like, Cam, stuff's coming your way, man. Like, he, he still talks about it to me. I was like, no way. But that's just an example. And, and so, what does that look like for you? Um, you could lose family members. You, you could lose your job. You may not be able to pay the bills. The bills. My mom is struggling with that right now, and, and I just have to keep pointing her to this passage. Um, there, there's stuff coming, and are you going to consider it a joy? Are you going to be glad? In Jesus. Because when Paul was in jail, when he was writing the letter to Philippians, he said, What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or truth, that the gospel is proclaimed. Amen. Like, it doesn't matter what I'm going through, guys. If Jesus is being proclaimed, if people are coming to know him, I'm good. You know? Amen. So I wish, I, I, I hope that the Holy Spirit will give me that attitude. <laughs> you know? Um, but our second point. Um, it, it's going into verse 5. It says, But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives you all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. And, and what I, I've done here is I, I put, and this it might have to do with the reason I labeled this point, this is, is being thankful for a dad. 
And what I mean by that, it says, but if any of you lacks wisdom, what's going on is before this, before verse 5, it's talking about trials, it's talking about endurance, running the race, because Jesus is coming back. So if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all generously and without reproach. The thing is, is we are without reproach because of Jesus. That's what Colossians talk about. Colossians even says we're above reproach, which is crazy. When we go to the throne, God doesn't see our mess up. He sees Jesus, and that's awesome. So... Yeah, and so, but if any of you lacks wisdom, what's going on is God saying, if you don't know how to do this, and you lack wisdom, all of us lack wisdom, if you don't know how to get through this, if you don't know what to do, I'm your dad, and I got you, ask me. <laughs> Just ask me. And like, what we're talking about with the Holy Spirit, it's like the attorney, he'll be right there. Amen. He's got you. If you don't know how to go get through what you're going through, you're all going through stuff. I know you are. You can see it on your faces sometimes. You can see it on my face. But we have victory in Jesus. And because of Jesus, we have a relationship with God who is our daddy. And he is our father. And he, he wants that relationship with you. He wants to help you. He wants to give you advice on how to get through the situations you're going through. But you have to ask. Later in James it says, you have not because you ask not. And it's so easy to point the finger at God. God, what are you doing, man? When my dad died, I went out and I, I was yelling. I, I was a little 10 year old. I was kind of fiery. I was just like, Lord, I was praying for my dad that you would deliver him and now he's dead. What's up with that? You know? Like, what are you doing? And, and then my grandmother, who's the only reason I, I know about Jesus, was like, his ways are not our ways. Just trust. And I was like, Nana, you don't know what you're talking about. And I just walked off. <laughs> I was like, see you, Nana. But Nana knows what she's talking about. Always. And she can cook. So that's where I'm going. <laughs> that is where I'm going. <laughs> but, <laughs> sorry. Can you tell I've never been homesick before. And I'm just like, this week I've been homesick for the first time ever. I'm just ready to go home. No, I love you guys, but I'm ready to go see my mama, my, my grandma, my granddad, who just came to know Jesus. Yeah. And so that's a little, little, it's pretty sinking awesome. But um, but if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But here is a but, and it's a very big but. He must ask in faith without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Throughout this whole passage, God's saying, trust me. And, and here we get to this, but if you, you must ask in faith, which is trusting in God. And if you doubt, you're, like, you're saying, God, I don't believe you say what you say, and I'm going uh, to I'm gonna ask you to do this anyway. Even though I don't believe what you're going to say, but I'm asking you to do this. Do you know how insane that sounds? Like, it's crazy. Like, God, I don't think you're going to do what you're going to do. You're by, the Bible says this, and it has these promises, but I'm still going to ask, and maybe, maybe you'll do this. That's not a relationship at all. That's, that doesn't even seem like you trust me. It seems like you're putting up a big wall of protection, saying, well, God, if you do that, that's great, but I'm going to go this way. And it goes into you're driven and tossed like by the wind. You have no foundation because God's not your foundation. His word's not your foundation. So you're just going to be driven and tossed by the world. So you might be looking like you're saying, hey, I serve God. But when you leave this building and when you're not around believers, you, you're not looking like you're serving Jesus at all. Because you're driven and tossed by the wind. We don't know where you're going. There's no, there's no stability in your life. I was, I've been there. Been there, done that. So we, we need to put our trust in Jesus. Some people, this message is for a believer. If you're not, if you don't know Jesus, and your life's going a bit crazy, and you're driven and tossed, and you're trying to, you're trying to do things on your own by doing your faith, and then you're coming over here, and you're living for the world, and you're trying to hold it all up, you don't do anything. <laughs> it's Jesus doing things through you. It's all about the gospel. It's about Christ working through you. You're not devout because it makes you righteous. You're righteous, therefore you become devout. <laughs> There's a difference there. And that's just something to think about. Because of Jesus' goodness, 
I, I, I'm, I'm just saying, there, there should be something in you. I can't get enough. I want to know Him more. I'm going to be in His Word because I want to know God. And I, I can know God because of what Jesus has done. So if any of you lacks wisdom, ask God. But you have to ask in faith. You have to trust Him. Trust Him. I mean, has He not proved that He's trustworthy? We messed up in Genesis 3. God had a plan. And it was redemption through Jesus. And he fulfilled Amen. that. And he's still redeeming us. We were saved and now we're being saved through sanctification. And, and Jesus is coming back soon. So that's just something to, to think through about wisdom and all that fun stuff. But faith is the, the response of trust. The, the third point, which I, I kind of already went over, is by remaining in faith, you, you will remain thankful or glad. And, and with the whole control thing, the stability thing, um, the thing is, is the Holy Spirit is one of self-control. And so if you, ha if you have the Holy Spirit, you have a spirit of self-control. 2 Timothy says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and self-control. And so, if things are unstable, you, you, might, you might just need to take a step back from your situations and, and analyze, Lord, what's going on? And, and if you don't know the Lord, I might need to know Jesus. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think I know Jesus, and, and I want to know Him. This Jesus that Scott talks about, there's something different about how Scott talks about Jesus and how uh, all these other guys talk about Jesus. I just, there's something wrong here. I, I'm not passionate about the cross, I just, I just come here on Sundays and then leave Jesus here after I'm done. You just might need to reevaluate some things. Um, but I, there, there's just, if you haven't put your trust in God, I pray today is the day. Um, we need to, our lives need to be reflections of Jesus through our trials. 